Okay, so we're going to finish up today by looking at uh, hyperbolas. Okay, that's the last um, conic section. And we'll start out with the definition of a hyperbola, and then I'll show you what it looks like. And then we'll kind of get the vocab out of the way and finish up with some calculations. So, like every definition we've started, this one starts exactly the same. It's a collection of points in the plane that fit a certain definition. So with an ellipse, it was the collection of points in a plane such that if you measure a point on the edge of the ellipse to the first focus, that point to the second focus, focus and add those numbers up, you always get the same thing. Well, this is pretty much the same definition except you change one word. Instead of measuring the distance to two points and finding the sum, you're going to measure the distance to two points and you find the difference. And that's the only thing that changes. So you have these two special fixed points. You measure the distance on your graph to one of them, on your graph to the other one, subtract them, and it will always come out the same. So that one word that I just underlined is the only word that's different between the two definitions. Okay, what did we call these two fixed points yesterday? Anyone remember the names of them? They were like the two push pins that if I put them in a board and put my ID around it and stretched it tight and make an ellipse. What, what do we call those two points? The what? Yeah, they're the foci. All right. So the same thing here. These two special points are called the foci. Um, but I'm going to show you a picture first. So in this picture, C and B are the foci. So what the definition is saying is you can take point E and drag it anywhere you want along the left part. Oh, you don't want to do that. Or the right part. Move it over there. And if you take 14.04 and subtract 8.38, you will always get 5.66. No matter where you move. Well, if I can just move the point. No matter where you move point the distances change, but the difference between them is always 5.66. Do a rounding, it might come out to like 5.65 or something like that, but it always comes out the same. So any question on that? That's the de definition of hyperbola. It's all the points such that if you measure the distance to two fixed points and subtract them, it comes out exactly the same. And this is the only conic section that's actually broken into two pieces. Um, they're not called pieces, okay, but I'll tell you what they're called in a second. So the two fixed points that are inside the pieces, okay, that the pieces wrap around, those are your foci. C and B wraps around it. It's kind of like when we had a parabola. The parabola wrapped around the focus. Now, we have two axes here, but they're not called the major and the minor axis. That's an ellipse. So we, we kind of have to forget everything you know about ellipses for, for this. Okay. <coughs> the line that goes right through the foci, that's called the transverse axis. And the way I remember that is, to me, the word transverse kind of looks like traverse. And if you traverse something, it means to go across it. You're going to traverse the bridge. You're going to cross the bridge. So if you draw a line, basically the best I can do, right through those two points, it goes across the pieces of the parabola, connect, uh, hyperbola. Okay? It connects them. So the line through the foci is the transverse axis. Okay? If you draw a line segment between the two foci, and find the midpoint, that's called the center. That's exactly the same definition as an ellipse. So here's a focus. Here's a focus. Draw a line segment. 
Find the midpoint. That is your center. Okay, now I'm going to give you the name of the other axis. If you draw a line through the center, perpendicular to the transverse axis, yesterday we called that the minor axis. Okay. Today, it's called the conjugate axis. So a line through the center, perpendicular to your transverse axis, is your conjugate axis. So it's kind of like major and minor axis. Now, the two parts of a um, hyperbola, these things that curve, they're not called parts, okay? they're called branches. And there's two cases you can have. The branches can open left and right, like that, or they can open up and down. So your picture either looks like this, or it looks like that. And if you're wondering, well, how do I know like, how curved I should make it? Should I make it more like that, or more gradual of a curve? There's a way to figure out exactly how much it should, should curve. Okay. So that won't be any question when I'm, when I'm done. All right. Now, if you draw in your transverse axis, it's going to cross the hyperbola at two points. Does anyone have a guess what those two points are called? It's the same name as where the major axis crossed the ellipse yesterday. Yeah, those are your vertices. So the point where your transverse axis crosses the hyperbola, those are your two vertices. Questions on those terms? Vertices, both side, transverse axis, conjugate axis, and center. Okay. So let's take a look at the equation of a hyperbola. And I told you it's going to look just like an ellipse, except you change one thing. So just like we always do, I'm going to start out at the case at the origin. Okay, so as far as h and k, we don't need them yet. h is 0, k is 0. Okay, the other nice thing about a hyperbola is it uses the same letters, h, k, a, b, c. The foci are negative c0 and c0. And the definition that we had for c from yesterday is the same today. c is the distance from the center to the focus exactly the same as it was yesterday. The definition for A is exactly the same as it was yesterday. A is the distance from the center to the vertex. Um, B, we're not really going to talk about definition too much. Okay? But A and C, you need to know. And this is the case where the transverse axis is horizontal. So you're looking at something like this your branches open left and right. <laughs> There's your equation. It's x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. What's the only thing that's different in that equation from the ones we did yesterday? It's a minus. It's a minus, that's it. But that minus is important because now we said yesterday, wherever a squared was, that controlled the direction of the major axis. That's not true today. I'll explain to you in a minute how you can figure out which way the major axis goes. Um, yesterday, the relationship was c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Today, it's plus. c 
squared equals a squared plus b squared. Looks like the Pythagorean theorem. Um, not 100% sure if there really is any connection with it. I don't think so. Um, it's just the letters we happen to use. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. So all of this is pretty much the same as yesterday. Here's the one extra thing with a hyperbola. So if I draw this right, the question is how much does it curve? Okay. Well, what we need to figure out is basically the equation of those two dotted lines. What's going to happen is you're going to have two dotted lines that make an x. Okay. Here's another example. Once you find the equation of that x, you just fit your hyperbola either in the left part, or the right part, or the top part, or the bottom part. You just fit it in that part of the x. Does anyone remember what we call these dotted lines that something gets closer and closer to but never actually touches? Yep. It's an asymptote. So this hyperbola has two asymptotes two sides of the x. The equation to find the asymptotes, you don't have to worry about a y-intercept with this because it's going to go right through the origin. What you do have to worry about is what is the steepness, what's the slope. That's how you find the slope with the asymptote. It's positive b over ax and negative b over ax. So yeah, it is one extra thing you've got to find, but the A and the B, you have to find A and B anyway to do everything else. So there's no extra work. You just have to write it down like that. Right. Any questions on that? So that, that's a little different, but we'll, we'll practice that. Um, I'm not worried about this. Don't worry about that. Um, the part below it, if you don't have it written down or you want to write it again, it's the same thing we wrote yesterday. A is the distance from the center to the vertex. C is the distance from the center to the focus. And A is always going to be positive anyway, C. Well, actually, no, I'll just leave that, just in case. If I was going to write that, I would just summarize it like I have on the board on the side. A is the distance from center to vertex. C is the distance from center to focus. Okay. And as far as explaining new stuff, that's it. So now the rest of the time, we're just going to look at some examples. Okay. So keep in mind that general idea, you always need to find A, B, and C first. If you also have to find H and K, well, when you do that, but we're not doing H and K yet. Okay. There's your center, your focus, and your vertex. Now, when I give you a problem like this on the test, I will always tell you which conic section it is. I can't just give you this information and say, find the equation. I have to tell you, is that an ellipse or a hyperbola? And I, and I will. Let's start with A. A is the distance between the center and the vertex. How far apart is the center and the vertex? Two. Yeah. Now B, we really don't have a definition for B. B we're always going to have to find using the equation that looks like the Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. But C, we have enough information to find. C is the distance from the center to the focus. Three. Three. Now we can get B. So C squared equals, um, what's A squared? Four. Plus B squared. And technically, if you're going to write the equation, you need B squared. B squared is five. That's what's going to go right here, 5. You don't really need b. Unless you're going to write the equation of the asymptote, then that needs b. Okay. 
Okay, so let's, let's do all of them. So b is the square root of 5. Okay, any questions on a, b, and c? Okay, I'm going to save the asymptotes for last. Let's go through, you know, I already drew them, but I'll draw them again. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put down the stuff they gave me. I'm going to mark the center, 0, 0. I'm going to mark the vertices, negative uh, 2, 0. And now there has to be another one. They didn't tell me it, but I know because of symmetry. Where's the other vertex? Plus 2. 2, 0 to the right. So that's your center, v1. V2. Now I have a focus at 3, 0. And I have to have another focus where? Negative 3, 0. Everything's symmetrical. Now the foci are not actually part of the graph. They're points C and B inside it. Okay, so we're not going to be drawing the hyperbola through C and B. Okay. But at least we know to wrap around them. All right, now I'm going to do my asymptotes. Let's look up the formula. It's y equals positive or negative b over ax. y equals positive or negative b over ax. Now, for the purpose of graphing, I really want to have square root of 5 as a decimal because I'm going to think of this as rise over run. So I want to know what what square root of 5 is. Doesn't have to be super accurate, just, just a rough answer. Um, it's about 2.2. So that's where I'm going to, that's how I'm going to do it. So there's the equation of my asymptote. So the first one, I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to go up 2.2 and to the right 2.2. Is any questions on how to graph rise over run? In pre cal, so we're okay with that. All right, so start at the origin up 2.2 over 2.2. I'd probably give you one without a decimal on the test, just a little easier. Up 2.2 over 2. Let's do it one more time. So now we should be up at 4.4 over 2. Okay, good enough. So our first asymptote. And now the other one is the same thing except down 2.2 and right 2. So down 2.2, right 2 would put me about there. Down 2.2 again should put me around negative 4.4 and right 2. It's as good as I can do. If I did it somewhat okay, uh, close enough. All right, so now we've got the X shape, so when we draw our branches, stay inside, <coughs> stay inside the X shape. All right, so the parabola is going to wrap around the foci. So the best you can, just kind of draw that. And it should look like it's getting closer and closer to the dotted line. Okay. And make sure you go right through the vertex. Down through the vertex. And it should look like it's getting closer and closer. And that's the picture of your hyperbola. Okay, so the asymptotes, that's the one extra step. If you wanted to see what does it actually look like, um, I could just move the dotted lines away. Well, I can move everything away so you can see it very clearly. That's what your hyperbola looks like. On the test, though, you don't have to erase the dotted lines. Just, just leave everything the way it is. But that's the picture we just created. Any questions on that? Let's try, try another one. Okay, this one is a discuss. Okay, so you don't have to graph it. 
I just want to know where the center, the foci, um, the vertices, and which way the uh, which way the transverse axis goes. See, I almost call it major axis. It's very easy to mix this up. Okay. Um, a and B. Where should I be looking in this problem to figure out what A and B are? It has to do with the 16 and the 4. We just got to figure out which one is which. Well, if we go back and look at the equation, A is under X, B is under Y. Yesterday, could A and B switch places? Yes, they could. Today, never. A and B will never switch places. What will is the X and the Y. I'll jump ahead just to show you, but you're always going to keep the A under the X. You're always going to keep the B under the Y. This is the next equation we're going to do. You don't have to write it down yet. Um, well, actually, I said it right. A and B never switch places. It's the X and the Y that do. Um, so when I said A is always under X, I'm sorry, that wasn't right. But A and B never switch places. It's these two that switch. So I said it right, and then I added something extra. Right. So again, keep A and B where they are. Don't ever move them. You can switch the X and the Y. That kind of makes it a little easier, because that means the number in the bottom, the first one is always the A. The second one is always the B. You don't even have to think about it. First one is always the A, the second one is always the B. So let's go back. So what is what is A in this case? Four. Four. And the second number is always has to do with your B, and that's two. Okay, little little different from yesterday. Yesterday we said the bigger number is A. Well, in this case, that would work, but I don't want you to think that the bigger number is A today. A is always the first number, B is always the second number. So you have to keep that straight. Okay. Um, and what's my equation to find C? Yep. Uh, it is A squared plus B squared. A squared plus B squared. So C is the square root of 20. Okay, so now we, we can discuss this. Um, so vertices, it's the distance from the center. Uh, we need A, the distance from the center to the vertex. Um, we didn't write the center yet. Let's do that first. Since there is no plus or minus in the top here, what does that mean my center is? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Yep. Now, the vertices are going to be four units away from the center. Are they going to be four units left and right, or four units up and down? Yeah, we haven't done the up and down yet. We've only done left and right. Um, and the trick, how you can tell, does this look like this, or does it look like this? Look for the one that's positive. Whichever one is positive, okay, I consider the y to be negative because it has a negative in front of it. Whichever letter is positive, that's the direction of the transverse axis. So if x is positive, the transverse axis goes in the x direction. If you switch the x and the y around, then the y would be positive, and the transverse axis would go up to down. Okay, so this is left and right. Can you still think of it as like which one's the bigger number under? No. Or not for this one? No. Oh. No. You gotta think of this one as which one is the positive one. Yeah. That's why it's similar to an ellipse, but then some of the tricks we used for an ellipse don't apply here. Um, it's just the way it is. So vertices are four units left and right of the center. Um, what would be four units left of the center? About um, Josh? Um, so our center is zero, zero. Just give me the coordinate that's four right. units left. So that would be uh, four, zero, right? Well, that's four units, yeah. right. We need that one. Oh, too. that negative four, zero. 
a negative force. Okay, the foci. Um, what letter tells me about the foci? Which one? C. C is the distance from the center of the foci. The foci are that many units away from the center. What is that? Don't worry about it. It's just negative square root 20, 0, and positive square root 20, 0. If you really want to know, it's about 4.5 or so units left and right. Um, transverse axis, I already answered that question. Which way does this one go? Horizontal. Yep. And the asymptotes, um, we have to remember, was it B over A or A over B to find the slope? B over A. For this one, B over A. Okay. When it goes the other way, it is going to be A over B. But I have a trick to remember that. I don't have a trick for everything, but that one I do. So this one is B over A, 2 over 4. And what is 2 fourths reduced to? Uh, a half. Yep. So that's the one extra step. Okay. Any questions on how we, we went through that? I think the um, most helpful thing is just to make a reference sheet and write this all down. There's way too many weird things to remember. But if you can just look up how to do it, it, it makes it pretty easy. Right. Um, let's try discussing this one. Okay. This is one thing that's similar. Whether you're dealing with an ellipse or a hyperbola, it should always be equal to what number? One. It should always equal one. So let's divide everything by 36. If it's not equal to 1, don't even start. It's, it's not even in the right setup. Uh, 9 goes into 36 how many times? 4. Minus 4 goes, well, 4 goes into 36 9 times. All right, there's your equation. Okay. What's and I'm going to pick numbers that come out nice like this okay, for, the, for the test. Um, what's A in this case? Two. Two. A squared is always the first number. B squared is always the second number in a hyperbola. Um, so A is two. What's B? Three. And then use what kind of looks like Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. C squared is the square root of, or C is the square root of 13. Okay, what about H and K in this one? H and K would be in the same spot that they would be for an ellipse if they're there. The center is zero, zero. You don't have like x minus 1 and y minus 3. You don't have anything in the top like that. So if you don't have anything in the top, think of it as 0, 0. That's always the first thing you want to find. Everything is based off the center. So if you don't have that first, then you're going to be stuck. Um, let's do the transverse axis second. Which letter is positive, the x or the y? The x. So the transverse axis goes in the x. Okay. Um, and what letter tells me something about the vertices? Yep. A tells me that the vertices are two units away from the center, two units left and right, or two units above and below. Horizontal. But that tells you it's left and right. So, um, two units left of center. You can just write it like this. Positive 2, 0, negative 2, 0. Um, foci. Um, David, what letter tells me something about the foci? Uh, C. Yep, C. Distance from the center of foci. The foci are that many units away from the center, just like Ian said, left and right. So. 
And now the asymptotes, um, we just have to remember the slope. Is it A over B or B over A? B over A. Yeah, it's B over A for, for this type. Um, B was 3, A was 2. And there's all the stuff. Okay, so we've done a few examples now where the x has been positive and the y is negative. Now we'll, we'll switch it. All right. All right. So this is going to be, let me just move these off so you can read it. <coughs> the a and the b never switch places. a is always first, b is always second in a hyperbole. But the x and the y switch. Now the y is positive, the x is negative. Since the y is the positive, that means the transverse axis is going to be vertical. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. The foci are going to be c units above and below. Vertices, a units above and below. And notice what happened to the slope. If you compare what I just circled to the last slope, what, what happened? It switched. It flipped. So this is how I remember which slope is which. If you're dealing with a vertical transverse axis, vertical, the slope is A over B. I just remember VAB, if that helps. Vertical is A over B. When it's horizontal, well, it's blah, blah. So it doesn't really help me as much. But vertical is A over B, VAB. So just remember it in that order. V, A, B. A, B. V. Okay. If, if that helps you. Um, everything else I can kind of remember because we do it so often. C is the distance from center to focus, A is center to vertex. That doesn't change. Okay, so any questions on what I have there? Okay, let's try an example. Okay, it says to discuss. Um, we've done a couple of these, so we should know right away what's, what's wrong with that. Needs to equal one, so what should I do? Divide by 4. So I square it over 4. Now, I don't have anything in the bottom, so what, what could I put if I want to put something there? One. I could just put 1. Okay. And now A and B, we should be able to get pretty quick. Um, what's A? Four. Careful, that's A squared. Uh, two. 2. Yep. And B? 1. And C? If you go through and do c squared equals a squared plus b squared, you're going to get 4 plus 1, which is 5. Okay. And that's it for calculations. Now we just have to write, write down um, the stuff. Out of these things, um, which one did I say is a good first one to do? Always do the center first. Where's the center here? Zero, zero. Until you see something like, um, actually I don't even do one like that. Until you see something like this, where you have a minus and a minus in the top, or a plus, the center is always zero, zero. All right, um, so center is zero, zero. Which letter is positive in this case, x or y? Y is positive which means the transverse axis goes in the y direction, which is vertical. Now that I know things are vertical, everything else is going to be above and below, because above and below is, is vertical. Um, vertices. I've got to look at A for that. The vertices are two units away from the center. What's the coordinates if you go two units above the origin? Zero. And below? Yep. The foci are C units away from the center. 
in this case, square root of five units. We did that earlier, it's about 2.2. But don't worry, just write it like this. Asymptotes. This time I'm dealing with a vertical <coughs> transverse axis. What's my slope when it's vertical? <coughs> that, right? Vertical is A over B. So, Y equals two, well actually you don't even need B, it's just two over one. You can leave it like that, that's it's okay. If you put two X, that's okay too. There's one like that. Questions on it? Alright, um, let's find an equation. Alright, we've already done enough discussing, so I'm going to skip that discuss. But we haven't found an equation of this type yet, so let's do that. Okay, notice it doesn't say find the asymptotes, so don't worry about it. It just says find the equation. Alright, um, Kelvin, what are the three letters I need to find first? A, B, and C. Yep. I really only need these two, but I'm probably going to have to use that Pythagorean theorem thing to get, to get one of them. Okay, um, let's start out with A, distance from center to vertex. Okay. How far apart is the center and the vertex? Two. B, I'm never going to be able to get that one from this information, but C, I can Distance from center to focus? Three. Three. And now C squared equals A squared plus B squared. B is the square root of five. Square root of five keeps coming up, it's just the numbers I picked. That's all. All right, so now let's write our equation. It's always going to be like this. It's always going to be like that. It's always going to be that. We just have to decide where do we put the x and the y. Think about if you graph these points, which way they would line up. Would they line up vertical or would they line up horizontal? You've got a vertex at 0, 2. You've got a foci at 0, negative 3. 0, positive 3. You also have another vertex because of symmetry. Which way are these points lining up? Vertical. So which letter should be the positive? Y. Yes. That's the steps you have to go through in your head to figure out which equation. Now just fill in your numbers. So we've got y squared over 4, x squared over 5, equals 1. Okay, if anything, I find conics just more of a pain. It's just, it's just a lot of little things to remember. It's not hard, but you just have to remember how to do it. Okay, any questions on that? All right, I'm gonna skip that discuss, and now we'll jump to the kind where um, the center can be shifted. So now you have to find H, the K, the A, B, C. Now, some of the things look like they change a little bit, but you know what, I don't even remember. I just go by the chart. So I figure out which way my transverse axis goes, and then I just follow all that information. Just find A, B, C, H, K, and do what that says to do. Now, if you notice here, they wrote a little different. That's the same thing I gave you. <coughs> C squared equals a squared plus b squared. If you just take and add a squared to the other side, it's the same. So for this part, I, I wouldn't go with what they do on the, the sheet. It's going to be kind of confusing. Just go with what I gave you. It's, it's the same. Okay. So any questions on what the letters mean? HK is the center. Everything else is the same as always. Um, the sketch, um, they're just showing you an example. You don't need to worry about the sketch. And let's finish up with this one. So find the equation of this hyperbola. 
Okay, again, I'll always tell you which conic section you're working with. So you're going to know which chart to flip to. An ellipse or a hyperbola. Okay. Uh, Let's start with H and K. What's H? One. Yep, K. Negative two. two. That's the only extra step in this whole problem. Everything else is exactly the same. A, distance from center to vertex. Two. Um, so let's look. Difference between one and three. Those are two units apart. The y values are the same, so you don't have to look at that. Um, C, distance between center and focus. One, four. Difference is three. Uh, B. What's my formula again to find um, B? C squared equals plus B squared. Yesterday it was minus. Today it's plus. A squared. Plus B squared. Uh, let's see. C squared is going to give me how much? Nine. A squared. I don't know why you think that everything's going to come out to 5. I just, uh, just went with the problems in the book. So bring the 4 to the other side. And there's B squared. OK, there's still one thing I have to decide. I have A, B, C, H, and K. But I have to decide this one or the one below it. I have to decide which one. So let's figure out which way everything lines up. Um, all the y values are the same. So how are these points going to line up if you draw them? Horizontal? Horizontal. Or vertical, yeah. You've got right 1 down 2, right 4 down 2, right 3 down 2. They're all down 2. So they're all horizontal. So that tells me. Um, use the x-axis formula. Okay, my transverse axis is horizontal. Okay, so it says x minus h squared minus y minus k squared equals 1. And now I don't remember where a and b were, but I don't have to. They're always in the same spot. a squared first. B squared second. Okay. Um, so filling that in, can someone tell me what um, what the final answer would be? X minus one squared. Over yep. Four. X minus one squared over four. I like it. Minus y plus two squared over five. Yep. So he got minus a minus, so he made it a plus. Didn't get tripped up by that. Perfect. Um, and you said over five. And you got one more thing. Always equals one. Okay. So that finishes up um, conic sections. Okay. Personally, I think this is harder than the stuff we're going to do tomorrow. Just a lot to remember. All right. So homework. Um, in the packet, some of it's matching again, so it's not all the problems you have to do out. Um, it's 13 to 16 all, and then the rest is odds. 17 to 21 odd, 29, 31, and 37 to 41 odd. So I think it comes out to like 11 or 12 questions. Um, yes, yep. Okay, don't forget, I will be after school tomorrow. That's the last Wednesday that I'm going to be after. I'm going to go back to Thursdays. Uh, if you do need any extra help, um, you've done the toughest stuff, so you could at least get help on the, on the hardest stuff.